This presentation is intended for CDA 5106 at University of Central Florida. My name is Rick Laniker, and this is Chapter 2 from our textbook, Instructions, Language of the Computer. So the instruction set, the repertoire of instructions of a computer, and they're all going to be different. Well, they may all be different. It depends on the, ar the processor architecture. Different computers have different instruction sets. And actually what that really should say is that different processors have different instruction sets. Uh, they all have aspects in common, of course, but even in the Intel line of processors, um, starting with the 8088 and the 8086 and, and, the, uh, and so forth, we have many more instructions now that have been added on, even though um, it's in the same family, the Intel processors, they still have uh, different instruction sets. <clears throat> However, they're, they're still backward compatible. So you can run 8088 software on, on, a, on, a, on a modern uh, Intel processor. So early computers had very simple instruction sets. Um, and even the, the Intel 8088 was pretty simple. However, if you've ever had to work with a segmented memory architecture, you might argue that it had a simplified instruction set. But it's simpler than what we have today. There are just so many more instructions that, that processors um, have, have added on as, as they evolve through the years. Um, many modern computers have simple instruction sets, um, such as RISC uh, processors. And we're going to be talking a good bit about MIPS. And MIPS actually has a pretty reduced uh, or simple instruction set. So it keeps things simple. So MIPS is used uh, throughout the book as the sort of uh, standard to, to uh, make points. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing. However, I'm also going to supplement that with um, Intel. So if you want to check out uh, MIPS, go ahead and go to MIPS.com. Um, large share of embedded cores uh, use MIPS uh, applications, say consumer electronics, network storage equipment, cameras, printers. You know, any of these um, sort of devices that have a processor uh, probably were programmed uh, with, with a MIPS assembler or maybe a C compiler that went, went to MIPS. So uh, MIPS is actually typical of many modern ISAs. And uh, if you have your book, there's a MIPS reference data tearout card um, that you can, you can use. However, there are lots of uh, references online. Just search for a MIPS reference data and you can probably find something um, that's really easy to use. So the first thing we're going to talk about are arithmetic operations. And um, we're going to be adding and subtracting uh, numbers, three operands. Uh, two sources and one destination. And we're going to get started with this really, really easy thing because um, we, we have to show show how this works um, in, in, a, in as clear and, and simple a way as possible. So if we add A, B, and C, um, A gets B plus C. Okay, so here's this instruction, add A, comma, B, comma, C. What that means is we're going to add B and C and place it into A. And this um, pound symbol or hashtag symbol means uh, comment. So add A comma B comma C and then once you see the hash, hashtag uh, symbol, everything past that is just a comment. Okay? All arithmetic operations have this form. In MIPS that is. Okay? So let's talk about design principle one. Simplicity favors regularity. Okay, regularity makes implementation simpler. Simplicity enables higher performance at lower cost. Okay. In addition, if you're familiar with Occam's razor, and I'm sort of loosely adapting this for, for programming, but Occam's, the Occam's razor uh, principle says, um, if there are two explanations for an occurrence, the simpler one is usually better. And I have found that to be true over and over again in programming. Um, the simpler approach to a programming problem is almost always going to be the better approach. Um, now, I, I don't say cut corners. I say solve a problem. 
but if you have two ways of solving a problem that act both actually do solve a problem, go with the simpler one. You're almost always going to be right. Okay, so let's consider our first um, arithmetic example. So suppose we have C code, and I'm, I'm going to assume that all of you um, have some sort of working knowledge of C. Okay, so our C code says F equals the quantity of G plus H minus the quantity of I plus J. Okay, pretty simple, straightforward C code. Compiled to MIPS code, we would break this up into two pieces. The G plus H, the I plus J, and then we subtract. So we'd say add uh, T0, T0 is one of the registers, and we'll be talking about that a little bit more in the future in these slides. So we're going to add, and remember we said the first um, part of this add command is where it's going to go. So it's going to go into the T0 register. So add T0 comma G H. What that means is T0 equals G plus H, okay, if, if you're looking at C code. The next line we have to do the, the, the I plus H quantity. So we're going to add T1 comma I comma J and that is going to be T1 equals I plus J. And these are both temporary things. Okay, These are both sort of temporary operations that we have to do so we can get to the final answer. Finally subtract and similar to, to add, subtract the first um, part of this is going to tell it where it's going to go. So it's going to go into F. So subtract sub f comma t0 comma t1. And if you're looking at C code, that would be um, f equals t0 minus t1. OK, so for this course, I would like to ask you to download a free MIPS compiler. And you can find it at, at this address here. So this is the actual download page for the, uh, the Mars uh, MIPS assembler. So you can see the uh, URL here and you can go to this URL and download it. And it's just a simple uh, Java jar file. So as long as you have Java installed it will run okay on your computer. Okay so here I've installed and I've run uh, Mars. So in um, MIPS assembly you need to have two parts data and text. In the data, we're going to put our variables. So G, you have to tell it what kind it is. It's going to be a word. Um, and we're going to give it the value of 3, H, word. Okay, the value of 4, I, dot word. We'll give the value of 2, J, word. We'll give it the value of uh, 1. And finally, F. We'll just give the value of zero. Don't forget that um, F is where we eventually want to store this. Now if you save it, and uh, I'm just using this default name, just saving it to the default location. But if you run and you go to assemble here, then down here it will show you the results. And this was totally successful uh, to run. OK, now I want to tell you that the slides are actually um, the, the code that you, the MIPS code that you saw in the slides are actually simplified, and, and that code won't really work. So if I if I did this, said um, add t t zero g h, and tried to assemble that, I'll get an error here. Okay, that's because you this this is not legal. You actually need to do it between two registers. So to fix that, what I do is I say load word s zero g load word um, S1H. So what I've done here is I've loaded G and H into um, actual registers. So here I can say S0, S1. Save that and compile it. Excuse me, assemble it. <laughs> and I get no errors, so it's fine. So just, just to be really, really um, clear, you can't really uh, add, um, put to to actual uh, variables here. You have to actually use registers. Uh, you can actually use, um, okay, so what I might want to do here is say, add some comments, say something like uh, load g into s0, 
And see, this is going to give your code a lot more clarity. I'm not going to do this um, for all of them. H into S1. Add G plus H. Okay. Now, I didn't really add G plus H. Really, what I did was I, I added those two registers. But those two registers contain the values. Okay. Now, we've got to do this for I and J. Load. Now, notice that S0 and S1, they're temporary registers. I used them in a very temporary way. I can reuse them, and it's okay. I've already gotten the sum in T0. So I'm going to say load word um, S0i. Load word S1j, like that. So now I've got I and J, and we're going to put those into T1. Okay, so I'm going to save it and assemble it and make sure, okay, I've got no, no syntax errors. And the last thing I need to do is, is subtract, and this is what I want to do, although this is not correct. F comma T0, T1. I'd like to just, just, just subtract them and put them into F, but if I assemble this, you'll see that, that that's, that's not a legal operation. Okay, so what I have to do is is, is drop back and punt, and and use uh, registers instead of those variables. S zero, like that. Okay, and if I assemble that, it's it's fine. So now S zero contains the the final answer. So all I do is I say store word S zero F, and that will actually compile. Or assemble, I keep saying compile because I'm used to saying that. Now the interesting thing is from execute, I can actually single step. Uh, if you look under run, F7 is, is a step. So if I hit F7, it's just going to step through this code. One instruction at a time, you can see here, S0 now has the value of um, 3. S1 has the value of 4 because it came out of those variables. So now T0 now has the value of, uh, it should be 7, and it's a little bit hard to see just because um, since I'm capturing this, it's, the text is probably a little bit small. I'm going to load these other temporary variables with I and J, and I subtract. Finally, I store it, and the program is done. Okay, so that's how you can use this Mars program, and we're going to, I'm not going to be quite as um, detailed in later on in these slides, but I'm still going to use this uh, to illustrate the points. So arithmetic instructions use register operands, and you've already seen that in the example I gave you. MIPS has a 32 by 32 bit register file, okay? And remember when, when you looked at Mars, you saw on the right side it had, had a list of all the registers. Okay, these are used for frequently accessed data. Um, by the way, some of them are reserved and you can't actually use them. Um, you can't actually, um, you can use them in certain ways, but you can't actually set them. Okay, they're numbered from 0 to 31, and they're all 32-bit uh, data uh, words, which is going to be uh, the equivalent of, of a D word in Windows or an unsigned long in um, C. Um, a lot of times we think of a word as a 16-bit um, numbers such as an unsigned short, but that's not the way it is in, in MIPS. So, so just remember that in, in the case of MIPS, a word is 32 bits. Now you'll notice that the registers I was using were, were, were these, these T, T registers and the S registers. Um, notice that the T registers, you have T0, T1, and so forth, up through T9, and the S registers, you know, S0, S1, S2, so forth, up, to, up through S7. So um, I normally use um, the S registers for, for maybe uh, loading, sort of swapping in variables. And I normally am going to use the, the T registers for, for doing the operations. So here's the design principle, our second design principle in this section. Smaller is faster. And the reason that's true is because smaller means fewer instructions. Fewer instructions means there's less for the processor to do. If there's less for the processor to do, it's going to be faster. So just remember that uh, smaller is faster. 
So this slide actually uh, shows you what, what this C code, we've already taken a look at this C code. It shows you what the C code would, would compile into if you had a C compiler that was targeting MIPS. And notice that on the add, it's not add T0, comma, G, comma, H. It's add T0, comma, S1, comma, S2. So remember how I showed you in, in the code that I wrote that you can't just uh, directly add uh, two variables into a, a register. So the compiler has to make that adjustment too. So, so this actually uh, reflects uh, the code that I showed you. The only uh, thing it doesn't show you is the load word um, of S1, S2, S3, and S4 from the variables. Okay. So let's talk about memory operands a bit. Uh, main memory is used for composite data. And this includes arrays, data structures, dynamic data, such as that you'd get from malloc or new or something. And the reason for that is there just isn't enough uh, register space to, to, to accommodate arrays and data structures and dynamically uh, allocated data. So you have to use main memory for, for, for composite data types. So to apply arithmetic operations, you have to load values from memory into registers. Remember the, the example I, I showed you when, when we uh, created uh, that first program. So you load values from memory into registers and you store the result from memory register to memory. So there's, there's this way of swapping uh, back and forth Load, load word is going to go from variable into register. Store word is going to go from a register back to memory. Okay, each memory uh, address is byte addressed. Okay, in other words, it's the exact byte. Um, it's, it's not, sometimes in C, you know, you have pointers, and, and, and if it's an int pointer and you do a plus plus, it'll, it'll up, go up an entire um, integer. Well, in MIPS, you have to actually be really explicit on, on what, what the byte boundary is. Um, words in memory are aligned on, on four byte values or four byte addresses. So you, you can always assume that in memory, um, say an array of integers, it's always going to be each, it'll start on four byte boundaries. And then of course, each integer will be on four byte boundaries. Uh, MIPS is big endian as opposed to, to uh, little endian. Um, Intel is, is little endian. And um, the reason this might be important is because, let's say you're loading in um, a data file, maybe from some file format that, that's this big endian. Well, you're fine there. Um, in fact, all, all the, 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 the file formats that are, that are cross-platform uh, in general are, are going to be a big endian. However, if you load in, say, a bitmap file, a Windows bitmap file, it's little endian. And so you may have to do a lot of byte swapping in order to get the correct values. And here I've got an a illustration of big endian versus little endian. Big endian is, is what I learned because I, I originally started on the Motorola processors, um, the 68,000, and they're all big endian. But then I switched over to Intel, and they're all little endian. Notice that the values are exactly swapped. So that's why you have to do, um, when you're loading in, say, file formats that, that may or may not be native um, for, for the way your, your, uh, your platform is set up, you may have to do some, some byte swapping. OK, so now we um, talk about some C code that uses uh, something from an array. Um, so G equals H plus A sub A, and uh, A obviously is an array, and uh, in this case we're going to assume that it's an array of, of words or 32-bit um, values. Okay, so you already know how to load the value of H into a register. What, what we haven't discussed is how to load the value um, of A sub 8. And the way we do that is we get the base address of A into a register. And then we, um, we give it an offset when we do an operation based on it. So if you take a look at the compiled MIPS code, first of all, index 8 requires an offset of 32 because it's 8 times 4, right? 4 bytes per word. So the actual offset, the byte offset, and that's what MIPS works in, is going to be 32. 
So to get that value from a sub 8, we'll say load word, whatever the register is, comma 32, open paren, s3, close paren. That's going to load the word at a sub 8. Okay. So what we'll do now is we'll take a minute and go ahead and, and write a program to do this. Okay, so let's go ahead and write our program. Dot data. Dot txt. Okay. So first let's create that list called a. Dot word. And let's go ahead and give it values. Obviously, we're not going to go up that high because of the example. Now we're going to have G is a word. We'll give it zero because that's that's going to be our destination. H dot word has a value, so we'll say 17. Okay, so that's our data right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, assemble it and just make sure. Okay, no errors. Okay, so. Let's have a, a comment here. We want g equals h plus a sub 8, right? Okay. So a couple things we have to do. First thing we have to do, you know we have to do a load, load word um, into a register from h. Okay. The next thing we have to do is we have to get the base address of the A um, array. So we're going to say uh, load address into S3 A. So that's going to load the base address, in other words, the address in the very first um, value in A. Okay. Now we're going to load a word from there into S1. And the way we have to do that, first we have to give it the address, excuse me, the offset, the register we're talking about, which contains the base address, and that's going to load the integer value, or the word value, I should say word value, because integers have different um, uh, sizes depending on the operating, or whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. Finally, we're going to add, and it's going to go into T0, so we're going to add, let's see, S1 contains, excuse me, S3 contains H, and S1 um, contains the value from A sub 8. Okay. Finally, we're going to store that back, store word, T0, um, G. So we're going to store it off into that, that variable. Save it. Assemble, no, no errors. So let's go ahead and single step through it. So at this point, um, so at this point, the S3 uh, register has a value of 17. So now we have the, the base address. And we get the base address um, plus 32-bit, uh, 32 32-byte 32 offset. And that is going to go into S1, which has a value of 8. Okay, now we're going to add them with the destination in T0. So 17 plus 8 is 25. Finally, we're going, to, we're going to store that off into the variable itself. We're done. So here's a slight variation of the previous example we did. The C code is A sub 12 equals H plus A sub 8. Okay. And the only difference in this and the last example is, is the final store. It's still going to be H plus A sub A, 8 which we've already done. But if you look at the last instruction here, it's uh, store word uh, into the 48th byte offset. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can adjust our code to do this pretty easily. OK, so the only change we have to make to this code is right here. We say the 48th byte offset of S2. And that's the only change we have to make to um, to, to service that second uh, code example. So let's talk about registers versus memory. And the first thing I need to point out is that registers are faster to access than memory. 
um, not only are registers faster because they're they're directly uh, accessible to, and that they actually live on the processor, but to access um, values in memory, you actually have to do the load word or or the load address or uh, similar things. Uh, operating on memory data requires loads and stores, so that means you're gonna you're gonna need more instructions um, to do to do something. The compiler must use registers for variables as much as possible. Um, so if you can, keep stuff in registers, and, and it's kind of a balance because you have a limited number of registers, um, but only spill to memory for, for less frequently used variables. Okay, register optimization is very important. So one thing we haven't talked about yet are immediate operands. So this, this includes constant data. If you're a C programmer, then it's like a define or just a, a constant number or something. So constant data specified in an instruction as ADDI, note the addition of the I um, at the end of the instruction. And so you're going to add um, S3. You're going to add 4 to S3 and place it in S3. So that's like saying in C++, that would be S3 plus equals 4. Uh, there's no subtract immediate uh, uh, instruction, so there's not an SUBI. So you still have to use uh, ADDI, but you have to do it with a negative number. So this example, ADDI um, S2, comma S1, comma negative 1. That's the same as subtracting 1 and putting it into S2. Subtracting 1 from S1 and putting it into S2. So now we're up to our third design principle. Uh, make the common case fast. Uh, small constants are common. Immediate operand avoids a load instruction. Okay, so rather than have a variable with four in it, you you can just if you're always going to use four, just just go and use four. Um, okay, there's a special case register uh, called zero. So that's the first register or the zero register. And really, it essentially represents a constant of zero. It can't be overwritten. It can't be changed. It can be used, but it can't be changed. So this is useful for common operations, such as uh, moving the contents of S1 to T2 here. So you'd add um, S1 and zero and store it into T2. Logical operations, it won't be long before you need these in your programming. So in C and Java, you have shift left with the less than symbols, shift right with the greater than symbols. Um, these are represented in MIPS by SLL and SRL, bitwise and, and when you're, you're doing it with a register, and I when you're doing it with an immediate. Bitwise or is, is a vertical bar in C and Java. Or in MIPS or or I when you're using a, an immediate value. Bitwise not in C and Java is the tilde. In MIPS it's nor. So these are useful for extracting and inserting groups of bits in a word. Okay, so I'd like to give you another point of view. This is I'm using Visual Studio, and I'm gonna I'm using the inline assembler here. So my variables are up here. And here again, what we want is f equals um, g plus h minus i plus j. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So you see here, what I've done is I've moved the contents of g into eax and h into ebx, and then I've added ebx to eax, and that works. And let's go ahead and just, just run it, start debugging, and I have a breakpoint set here. Notice up here are the registers. Okay. Okay, so EAX is set to 4. EBX should be set to 5. And now when we add EBX to EAX, EAX should be <clears throat> 9. Okay, so that's that's real nice. But the Intel instruction set is, is quite a bit richer than, than the MIPS uh, register set. So what we can do, excuse me, the MIPS instruction set. 
So what we can do instead is we can alter this to add, we can add directly from memory. And you'll notice that the end result is going to be the same. Okay, EAX still is 4, and now we're going to add H to EAX. H um, has the value of 5, so EAX should now have 9, and you can see it does. So you can see how the Intel um, instruction set has has more, more to offer and, and is actually richer. So now let's go ahead and do this for I and J. We'll change this to B. Finally, we're going to um, subtract, let's see, subtract EAX. We're going to actually subtract EBX from EAX. We're going to store it into A. We're going to say move, move into F, EAX, just like that. Okay. Compile that guy. Go ahead and debug it. So as we step through here, we should be getting exactly, obviously EAX is now is 9. And EBX should be 3 after we add. Sure enough, it is 3. Okay, now we're going to subtract. 9 minus 3 should give us 6. So now EAX is 6. And finally, we're going to store it in the variable. And if we hover over the variable, we should get an answer. We should get, yeah, okay, 6. So there you go. I find this 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 um, assembly code quite a bit easier than, than the MIPS, and it gets even better as you do fancier things. So all instruction sets have some sort of shift operations built into them, and this allows um, the processor to shift bits, whatever the data in here, to shift it left or possibly shift it right. Um, so anyway, in MIPS, you have SLL and SLLV to shift left. The first one, SLL, we have a destination register, and then we have the source register, and then we have whatever the shift amount is, maybe you know one, two, three, four, five, however many bits you want to shift to the left. It takes the source register, shifts that many bits to the left, and places it in the destination register. SLLV is the same exact thing, except instead of a constant shift amount, it's going to be uh, based on a register. Uh, whatever the contents of the register is, that's how many uh, places it'll shift. SRL, SRLV, that's shift right, just the opposite of, of shift left. Um, and SRA and SRAV, those are quite different, or at least significantly different. So when you shift right, what's going to happen is you have this sign bit out here. And the sign bit, you might want to preserve the sign bit. And in order to do that, you'll do SRA, and, and that will preserve the sign bit. Um, because otherwise, if you do just a shift R, SRL or SRLV, um, that sign bit will be filled in with a zero when, when you start shifting right. But if you do SRA or SRAV, then that sign bit will be preserved. Okay, let's do a quick example here. We're starting off with 4 um, in the T0 register. Okay, now we're going to shift left. <clears throat> we're going to place this in the T1. Our source is going to be T0. And we're going to shift two places. So we save that. Assemble it. Let's kind of run through. Okay, so what we should have at here, 4 shifted over 2 places should be 16. So in the T1 register here, we should have 16 after this. And we, we do indeed. So let's go back now and do something slightly different. S0. So now we have two in the um, S0 register. So here we'll just say S0. Okay, so now that we have the value of two in S0, we're going to have to change this to SLLV. And we're going to go ahead and say S0. Okay, assemble that. 
and let's step through it, and it gives us the same exact answer. We just, but the only difference is instead of a constant, we went ahead and used a register. All instruction sets are also going to have an AND operation. And the reason you want to use AND operations is when you want to sort of uh, mask off bits uh, in, a, in a word. So for instance, let's say you have this, this word with whatever value, but you want to make sure only these bits um, stay. You'll AND it with these bits and everything else will become a zero. Okay, so here we're going to do a simple example. We're putting this value, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, into the T0 register. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mask off the T0 register with, actually let's go ahead and make that decimal 15. 15 is, is the lower four bits. And we're going to place it into T1. Okay, And that way, only the lower four bits, whatever they happen to be, will be retained. However, the upper um, bits from there will, will all become zeros because um, when you AND them um, and, and, and the, the, the and the AND value is only those lower four bits. Only those lower four bits will be preserved. So going to save it, assemble it, run through it. Okay, so now we're, we're going to go ahead and voila, we have only the lower four bits um, of, that, of that 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7 number um, preserved. So the OR operation um, is quite a bit different than the AND operation. In the AND operation, basically what you're doing is, is excluding some bits. In the OR operation, what you're really doing is saying, okay, here are the bits I want, and I want to make sure that they, they're, they're set in all of the destination bits. So let's say you have a, a byte, and a byte, uh, you start with a byte of say one zero one zero one zero, um, and you want to you want to or it with one one. So all of those first two bits one one are going to be set after the or operation. Uh, a lot of times we we use this for sort sort of, a lot of times we use this in C programming when we want to maybe combine things or combine features or combine uh, bits to indicate what we're trying to do. Okay, so here we have a simple example. First, we're going to place we're going to place five 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 hex into uh, T zero, and that's really um, bit zero set zero set zero set zero. So every other bit is set. Um, so let's just and what we're going to then do is we're going to or it with um, FF hex, and what that means is that the lowest eight bits are all going to be set. So let's go ahead and, and, and step through this. Let's assemble it, step through it. Okay. Uh, T0 now contains a uh, hex 555555555. Um, now what we're going to do is um, or it with um, FF hex. So really we're, we should be be going from five 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 to five 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 ff because all of the lower eight bits are going to be um, now set, and sure enough, that's what um, t one contains. So not operations simply invert all of the bits um, in a word. All zeros are changed to one. All ones are changed to zero. Uh, this would be the equivalent of XORing, say, one, 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 all, all ones uh, with, with some sort of a value. So there's actually not really a NOT operation in uh, MIPS, but we, we use a NOR. It's the, the opcode is NOR. And you look at this example here where um, the value in, in T1 is uh, NORed and it becomes a uh, uh, gets placed into T0 with all the bits um, uh, swapped. Okay, so we'll do a quick example here. Notice that we still have this um, 5555 value where every other bit is set. Now we're going to go ahead and um, use not. We're going to place it into T1. We're going to um, use T0 for the source. 
and we'll use zero because that's what we need. Okay, so save, assemble, and we'll step through it. At this point, um, T0. Okay, so at this point, T0 has all the fives in it, which is every other bit. Now what we're going to do is, is apply the not operation. And instead of fives, it should have all, um, I guess it will be uh, A's, tens. Okay, so in T1, is all A, 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 and so forth. So at a certain point, your program, if you're writing a MIPS, MIPS assembly program, uh, needs to make decisions. And decisions, if, if you remember, C or Java uh, always are based on if statements or switch statements or, or something, sim some similar construct. So in MIPS, we have um, a couple of things that, that help us out here. One is BEQ, branch of equals. So if one value equals the other, we're going we're gonna to do a branch to some sort of label. BNE is branch of not equal. If, if two values are not equal, we're going to branch to some um, label. And J is just an unconditional jump, which actually uh, a lot of times we, we are going to have to use anyway. So anyway, these are, these are really critical building blocks for MIPS. Okay, so here's some C code. If I is equal to J, then F equals G plus H, else F equals G minus H. Now notice on the right we've got a flow chart here for indicating um, how this works. It's just a single um, decision, two branches, and they, they come back together uh, once it's done. So as indicated here, F and G are going to be in S0 and S1. <clears throat> And this is what the compiled, and this is what the compiled MIPS code might look like. A branch is not equal to to the else label. Okay. Um, so that's that's the else, but here's the if. We're going to add those two, and then we're going to take um, an unconditional jump to exit, meaning exit this whole sort of flowchart um, element. Once we get to else, we're going to do a subtraction instead of an add. Okay, let's go ahead and write this. Okay, so let's start off by adding some variables. So we'll make i equal to 4, j equal to 5, um, f is going to be a word. And we'll put 6 into it. G is going to be a word. We'll put 7 into it. And H is a word. We'll put 8 into it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing we have to do, we're going to go ahead and put everything into registers here. So load word. S0, G, load word, S1, H, load word, S2, I, load word, oops, S2, excuse me, S3, on J. So now we have the variables into those uh, temporary registers. So now we have to do the compare. But first, let's let's add some labels. Here's our else label. Here's our exit label. Okay. All right. So first, we have to compare branch. If not equal, S2, S3, and we'll branch to else if it's not equal, right? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add, so we're going to add into S, 
excuse me, S4, we're going to add, we're going to add G and H. So that's S0, S1. Okay, so now we added it. So now we have to take a conditional, an unconditional jump to exit. Because if we don't, we'll, we'll end up doing this else stuff. Okay, and else, we, instead of an add, we're going to do a subtract. S4, S0, S1. Finally, in exit, all we have to do is store word S4 into F. Okay. Let's do that. Compile, or assemble. Now we'll step through it, just make sure everything looks right. And I'm watching the variables, I'm watching the registers, and everything looks good. So there we go. Okay, so let's let's take a look at uh, how you might do loops and MIPS. So here we have C code. Uh, while save save sub i equals um, k, uh, i plus equals one. You could say i plus plus either way. Okay, so for this example, uh, i is going to be contained in in the S3 register. K is going to be contained in the S5 register, and the address of save is going to be contained in the S6 register. We have a loop label and an exit label. Okay, so the very first line is shift left. Hmm, that's interesting because what we're doing is we're taking a value and we're shifting two places to the left. What that essentially does is multiply by four. So if you think about it, if you take any bit, uh, binary bit, and you shift it one place, it's times two, and two places, it's times four. And the reason we want to multiply by four, because remember, for every uh, for every i, i is going to be an index, a numeric index, but we have to multiply it by four because um, each each index really equates to four bytes because a word is four bytes. So in order to find the actual byte offset, we have to multiply by four. Okay, so then that value actually, so, so essentially the byte offset um, will be put into T1. And then what we're going to do, we're going to add to T1, we're going to add the actual offset of, um, of the save array. So that's the next line. Add, destination T1, source T1, and what we're going to add is, is S6, which contains the address. Now we're going to load the word into T0 that we get from wh wherever that is, and that's going to be save sub i. So we load that. So now T0 contains save sub i. And we're going to compare save sub i or t0 with s5, meaning k. And if it doesn't equal, we'll, we'll, we'll jump to exit. Otherwise, um, we're going to add 1 to i, and we're going to do an unconditional jump back to the loop uh, label. OK, so let's add some data here. We'll say um, i is a word, and we start at 0. OK, k is a word, and we'll say arbitrarily 17. Then we're going to say save is a list of words, actually. So we're going to say 0, 3, 5. Actually, I should make this um, <clears throat> go ahead and make this a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, prime numbers. Okay. <laughs> okay, so now we have our data. So we, we need a loop label here. That's where we're going to come back to. Before we do that, we need to set everything up. So we're going to say load word s0, s3, i, load word, S5, K, okay, load address, S6, save. Okay, so that's the setup. Okay, so now we need a loop label. And what we're going to do is get the value of um, I and multiply it by 4, so we can use that as a byte index. So SLL, T1, and here's I. 
is contained in S3, and we're going to hit shift at 2. That's the same as multiplying by 4. Now we're going to add the actual address to T1, and that's contained in S6. So now T1 is going to contain, contain the address of the save array plus the actual offset indicated by I. Let's get the value out of that um, array element. Zero. Okay. Now here's where I'm going to do it a little bit different than the, the slide had. So now T0 is going to have whatever the element that came from that array, such as 0, 3, 5, 7. Now I'm going to do a branch if equal. So once we find 17, we'll branch to the exit. So BEQ. So we're going to compare T0, which is the value we just pulled from the array, and S5, which is the value of K. And we're going to go, if it does equal, we're going to go to exit. Oops. So let's put an X label down here. Otherwise, we're going to add 1 to i. Um, i is contained in S3. And now we're going to do an unconditional jump back to the loop. Okay. Assemble. Oops. Got a little typo there. Assemble. Let's run through. And the branch EQ, if it's equal, once it finds that, that value of 17, it should now it's okay, so it's 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 looping. We should eventually get to this the value of 17 that it pulls. And it does. Okay. So let's take a, a look at the Intel equivalent of that last MIPS example. Um, here I've created um, in Visual Studio. Um, a program, a demo program, and here are the variables. And here's the uh, inline assembly. It's just easier. The, Microsoft has a really nice assembler called MASM, but for, for the, my purposes, this is going to be a lot easier to show you. Okay, so we don't need much setup. Um, we're going to load the effective address um, <clears throat> of the save array into SI. Okay, and then we're going to load K into and the reason we don't need I is because um, the Intel instruction set has a way of, of incrementing SI every time we pull a pull a 32-bit value. What this is going to do is it's going to pull a 32-bit value and also increment SI to the next um, array element. So we, we we get the get the get the value, which automatically increments the pointer. We do a comparison. And um, if they're equal or if they're not equal, we, we jump back. I can set a breakpoint here. And we'll just go ahead and run this in the debugger. And it's going to start here. And we just kind of loop through here. And you can take a look up here in the registers. EAX is 0, ECX is 11 hex or 17. And as we loop through here, What's going to happen is we'll get different values in EAX. Finally, in EAX, we'll get to 17. And it is equal, so it won't take that loop. Let's talk about basic blocks. So a basic block is a sweet sequence of instructions with no embedded branches, such as we just um, actually talked about branches with the BEQ, BNE, and um, unconditional jump. No embedded branches except maybe at the very end. Uh, no branch targets or, or labels where we're jumped to, except maybe at the beginning. And the compiler is able to identify basic blocks and, and then optimize them. That's, that's the point. That if you have a block and without jumps, uh, it, it actually gets optimized pretty well. An advanced processor can accelerate execution of basic blocks. Um, and it does this in, in a variety of ways, such as um, pipelining and, and, and caching and things like that. So there are actually more um, choices you have for, for conditional operations. And we did equal and not equal, but we somehow need to do less than or greater than or um, uh, similar things. 
So we have SLT, um, set if less than, SLTI set if less than immediate. Okay. So here's some C code. If RS is, correct, is less than RT, then set RD equals 1, else RD equals 0. Okay. And the next uh, C corollary is RS less than some sort of constant. Okay, same thing. So what we can do is use SLT and we put T0, we put into T0 either a 0 or a non-zero, depending on the, the outcome. SLT, the, 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 the destination is T0, but the comparison is S1 and S2. If S1 is less than S2, then T0 will be non-zero. Okay, and all we have to do then is do a branch of not equal of T0 to 0. It's a little bit indirect, but don't forget that MIPS is a, is a risk um, instruction set. So you might be asking a couple of questions now. And if I showed you some of this stuff, um, with an Intel assembler, you would you would see in Intel we use branch of we use actually jump of less than or jump of greater than not not branch. But why doesn't MIPS have some sort of equivalent BLT or BGE? Well, that's because the hardware for less than or greater than or equal to so forth is slower than equal or not equal. Okay, so combining with branch involves more work per instruction, requiring a slower clock. So what that means is that all instructions are penalized in those cases. So BEQ and BNE are the common case. Remember, we talked about optimizing the common case. And this is a good uh, design compromise. So there are going to be times when we have to call procedures. And here are the steps required. Uh, place parameters and registers. Now in Intel, that would mean uh, push parameters on the stack. So, so they're in Intel, you actually can technically call functions with uh, parameters and registers, but normally you push them on the stack. But in MIPS, you're going to place parameters and registers. You're going to transfer control to the procedure. You'll acquire storage for the procedure. You'll perform the procedure's operations. You'll place the results in the register for the caller. So the caller uh, gets, gets whatever you, you've determined to return. And then you return to the place of the call. Okay. So here's the register usage for um, calling um, <clears throat> functions. A0 through A3, those are going to be your arguments. So um, you should be able to do this in four arguments. Your first argument would be an A0. Your next argument would be an A1, and so forth. The return values are going to be v, V0 and V1. Okay. And um, don't forget that the T0, T1, all the way through T9 can be overwritten by the callee. Okay. So those are never guaranteed. Once you, you can't like set them and expect them to be a certain value, make a procedure call, and then expect them uh, for sure to be, be the same thing as when you called. Okay, S0 through S7, those are saved, and those are actually saved and restored by the callee. So those you can actually uh, count on as long as the callee has done their job. Um, the global pointer, the stack pointer, the frame pointer, the return address, those are all going to be uh, pretty much the same thing every time. So the procedure call instructions are um, JAL. To whatever procedure label you have, and the address of the following instruction is put into uh, the RA register and it jumps to the target address. Okay, and the procedure return is JR to RA. Okay, and RA has we've we've already established that RA contains the um we've already established that RA contains um the address to, to where we're going to come back to. Okay. It copies RA to the program counter, and this can also be used for uh, computer jumps. Okay, so let's go ahead and write a program that does a procedure procedure call. Add to numbers, and the parameters will come in. A0 will be one number, and A1 will be another number. And what we want to do is we want to put it into um, V0. Because remember, we said that V0, V1 were our return values. Okay. 
Okay, so we added um, A0 and A1. We put it into V0. Now what we want to do is we want to return. And to do that, we say JR R8. And R8 is, is, a, is a register that got automatically set when we made the procedure call. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make the procedure call. And we're going to say load immediate A0 5 load immediate A1 6 jump add two numbers okay JLs now at this point we should get to that point and have uh, V0 set to the the uh, correct value so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, quit the program and the way we do that is with a syscall okay all right Let's save it assemble it and let's go ahead and, and walk through it so so now a0 and a1 are set to their values of so five and six now we make the, the procedure call which goes down here and note that RA is automatically set for us. Okay, so we add them up into V0 which means that our return value is set and now we're going to jump back. We're going to set V0 to the um, system call that will quit the program and then we make that call and we're done. Okay, okay so now we have um, an Intel equivalent. Now for both of these, there, there are multiple ways you can make procedure calls, but I'm giving you the two most common. So this is actually the most common way of doing an Intel uh, procedure call. The first thing you have to note is instead of actually putting my parameter values into registers, I'm actually pushing them onto the stack. So I push 5 and I push 6. I call the procedure call, and then I have to actually what we call clean up the stack since I pushed um, a 32-bit a value and then another 32-bit value. That's actually a, a total of 8 bytes. So I have to actually clean up the stack when I'm done. Now there are other types of procedure calls where you don't have to clean up the stack. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, run this in the debugger. Okay, so let me go ahead and call that, call that. Now let's see, it's going to step into this. Okay, now what this is doing is setting up what's called a stack frame. Because I push things on the stack, I need a way to, to index the stack. So I'm going to use this thing, this register called EVP or base pointer. And first I save it, and then I restore it. And that's just being very polite because someone else might have uh, counted on that being a certain way. And then I put the stack pointer into it. Finally, I just move the value from there and, and then I add it. So let's go through, just make sure we're okay. EAX is now five. And if I add this next value, it should be uh, added. Okay. Pop. Don't forget that the processor, similar to MIPS, is maintaining the, um, the return address. And here I am, I clean up the stack and I'm done.